For those of you who might have uh, arrived recently, my name is Tony, this is my friend Mitchell. We are members of Grace Community Church here in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, if you are in a Bible-believing, gospel-preaching, Jesus-loving church, stay right where you're at. But if you are not in that kind of church or if you're in no church at all, we would welcome you to join us for fellowship and for worship. Um, Grace Community Church is uh, located on Roscoe, about a mile or so west of the 170. Very easy to find. We have uh, two services on, on Sunday morning. We have a service on Sunday night. We have fellowship groups meeting throughout Southern California um, during the week. And so we invite you, come, come. But more important than coming to our church, far more important than coming to our church, my friends, is coming to faith in Jesus Christ. Because there are a lot of people in the world today who are filling pews and chairs on Sunday morning, and when they die, they're going to stand before God and hear Him say, Depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of, righteous, uh, of lawlessness. See, my friends, going to church on Sunday and living like hell Monday through Saturday, that is not faith, that is hypocrisy. And your church attendance does not commend you to God. Your good works do not commend you to God. Your prayers do not commend you to God. And the reason for that, my friends, is that there is nothing about us as human beings born in sin. There is nothing about us that commends us to God. Now that comes as a shock to many people because many people have been told, even people in some Christian churches, that man is basically good. That you are basically good. That while nobody is perfect, there's a little light in all of us. I had, I had a man today, I had a man today outside of the Mission Hills Abortion Clinic holding two freezer bags with used $100 bills, probably fifty dollars or $100,000, after he dropped off a woman at the abortuary to murder her child, insist that the Spirit of God was in him, insisted that he was a good person and that he was right with God and that those of us who were trying to save babies' lives and, and, and seek and to save those who were lost, that we were the ones who were wrong with God. And that's how twisted man's mind is. That's how twisted man's heart is. That a man could show off $100,000 in $100 bills, likely obtained illegally, after he drops off a woman at an abortion clinic, and he could say with a straight face, I'm a good person. And the reason he could do that is because his morality is so very low. He believes he's going to be judged by the standard he has set for himself. Even though he calls evil good and good evil. The Word of God says that most people will declare their own goodness even though the end result will be death. But can I share with you what God says about us? My opinion of you is irrelevant. What I think of you means nothing. Nothing. And I can, I can almost say with, I can say with certainty that too often I think of myself more highly than I should. But here's what God says about us. Here's what God says about the most righteous among us. And you'll find it in Romans chapter 3, beginning in verse 9 through verse 18. Romans chapter 3. Are you there? Okay. Beginning in verse 9, God's Word tells us this, What then? Are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under sin. As it is written, None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. 
All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. In their paths are ruin and misery. In the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. My friends, that's not written about the Muslim terrorist. That's not written about Adolf Hitler. It's not written about Osama bin Laden. That's not written about Stalin. That's not written about Pol Pot. That's written about all of us, my friends. All of us. That is our human nature. Our sin nature. That we could trace back to our great, 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 great mom and dad, Adam and Eve. We all come from the same family tree, my friends. See, there's only one race. There's not black and white. There is a human race. A human race. There is one race in which there are many different kinds of people. Just like there are dogs. There are St. Bernards, there are Chihuahuas, there are Elk Hounds, there are Collies, there are German Shepherds, Rottweilers, Terriers. They're all dogs. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Middle Eastern, Sub-Saharan. We are all part of one race, one human race. And that race began with Adam and Eve. God created Adam and Eve. He created them good as He created the rest of creation. And they willfully chose to rebel against God. And now I want you to think about this, my friends. Maybe this applies to you, maybe it doesn't. There are so many people in the world who think that God's going to overlook their lying, that God's going to overlook their stealing, that God's going to overlook their blasphemy, that God's going to overlook their fornication, their adultery, that God's going to overlook the murder in their heart, that God's going to overlook their sexual immorality. When God condemned the human race over a bite of fruit, Think about that. All of mankind was condemned to death because a woman and a man, the first woman and the first man, were told, I made all of this for you. All of it. Don't eat from this one tree. And so they ate from that one tree, and that's when sin and death entered into the world. But yet mankind thinks... God's going to overlook my abortion. God's going to overlook my drug dealing. God's going to overlook my white collar crimes. God's going to overlook my Ponzi scheme. God's going to overlook me enslaving people. God's, God's going to overlook me murdering in the name of God. God's going to overlook all that because I'm such a good person. But yet he condemned all of humanity to death for one bite of one piece of fruit. And when sin and death entered into the world, our entire race, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, our entire race was condemned. Our entire race was now tainted with the indelible stain of sin. And because of that, God does not see you as righteous. God does not see me as righteous. God doesn't see me as one seeking good. God doesn't see you as one seeking good. Not in our flesh. Not in our flesh. How many times has your throat been an open grave? 
Jesus said, it's not what goes into a man that defiles the man. It's not what you eat. It's not what you drink that defiles a person. Jesus said it's what comes out of the mouth that defiles the person. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So how many times, my friend, has your throat, your voice, your mouth been a trash can? Been a filthy ashtray? Been a dirty sepulcher? What's that, ma'am? Well, I mean, there, there are two different things there. We shouldn't lie, right? That is filthy talk as well. We, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't be speaking profanely. We shouldn't be taking the name of the Lord our God in vain. We shouldn't do anything with our mouth that robs God of his glory, whatever that is. But how many times have you done that, my friends? I can't count how many times I've fallen short. I can't count how many times. Word of God says that our mouths are full of curses and bitterness. Word of God says that the human, the human existence is made up of people whose feet are swift to shed blood. I spend Wednesday and Saturday mornings outside of a local murder mill. The world sanitized. Don't shake your head, sir. Babies are murdered there. And if black lives mattered to you, sir, you would care too. Because they go into the black communities more than any others to murder unborn children. So, sir, the next time you scream, Black Lives Matter, but you uh, shake your head and wag your tongue at black babies being aborted, know you're a hypocrite. Amen. Know you're a hypocrite, sir. Every Wednesday and Saturday morning, I'm in Mission Hills, standing outside of an abortuary, when men and women, young and old, sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, grandmas and grandpas, bring unborn children in to slaughter them. Okay. All right. I'll answer that. I'll answer that. I don't think you're going to like the answer because it's the truth. So the young man over here said, so if a lady's raped and she doesn't want to keep the baby, it's murder if she has an abortion? Yeah. Why would you murder the baby for the crime of the father? Why would you murder the baby for the crime of the father? So let's, let's take your rationale, young man. The woman decides, even though she was raped and impregnated by, a, by a, a vicious, disgusting man, she decides to keep the baby. Many women do. Many women do. And she gives birth to the child, and the child's about two or three months old, and the baby starts to look like the father. The baby starts to look like the rapist, and now she's uncomfortable. Now she's going to have to live with this child forever and ever that reminds her of the day she was raped. So that mom should be able to slit the throat of that three month old, right? That mom should be able to go into a clinic and have that baby ripped limb for limb because that baby's inconvenient now, right? Right? You have no intelligent response, young man. You eat eggs. He was confronted, he was confronted he was confronted with the folly of his worldview, and he asks me if I eat eggs. He's going to equate an egg yolk with the murder of a human being. That's how wicked the human heart is, my friends. None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed innocent blood. In their paths are ruin and misery. And they, in the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God in their eyes. Bibles, English and Spanish. Young man, I'm about to make a moral judgment about you, not an intellectual one. The Word of God says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Young man, you're a fool. You know God exists. How does he know? The same way I do. The same way you do. He simply suppresses the truth he knows about God by his unrighteousness and professing to be wise, he has become a fool. 
He exchanged the worship for his creator with the man he sees in the mirror. And he hates God. And he hates him. He knows he exists. And he simply hates him. And my heart breaks for you. I don't have the hatred for you that you have for yourself and the God who made you. But you will stand before your creator, young man. And like everyone else, he will punish your sin. And you're not going to party in hell with this figment of your imagination, this, this false idea of Satan that you have. You're not going to hang out with your friends. You're not going to be on the pipe. You're not going to be shoving anything in your arm. You're not going to be having any fun. You're not going to be partying. You're going to want to do all the sin you do in this life, yet you'll have no ability to carry it out. And God, and God is, and God is. standing out here judging people. Why are you judging me, sir? 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 Is it okay? Is it okay for you to judge me? Is it okay? What's that? It's not for you to decide. It's for me to care. It's not for me to decide. It's for me to care. So if you want it's to for me to care. here and be an advocate for Jesus, yeah. you need to express love. And I am expressing love to him. I'm calling him to turn from his right, sin. But you just called him a fool. The word of God calls him a and fool, And the word sir. of God, it says if you call people a fool, you no, will be in no, danger no, of hellfire. No, you don't twist scripture lest yes, you be like does. Satan. Yes, it Don't does. twist scripture lest no, you be you like Satan. I'm not calling him an you idiot. I'm calling him a fool. I live by the word. No, no, you're not doing it now, sir. And, and in the name you're not doing it now, sir, because you deny the word. Any demonic force that is operating in you, I command it to come out you have no authority. and go back into you have the no pit power. of hell. You have no right power. Right now, in the name you of Jesus. You have no authority. You have no power. Because you don't know Jesus. In the Jesus. name of Jesus, there you don't are know angels. Jesus. You don't know Michael, Jesus. Michael, the archangel, is standing right here. You don't know that. I know no, that. No, you don't, young man. You yes, need to I repent do. and angels put your trust in Christ. Live with me. No, they don't, young they man. They surround me. No, they don't, young man. They do. All day long. You're deceived, sir. You're deceived. All day long. You're filled with hate. And, and the, the same, blood, and and the the blood same of word, Jesus, the same word pray, that pricked him I has pricked you too. You. I pray for you. God cannot hear your I prayer, pray sir. For you. Until you turn from I your sin and put you. your trust in Christ, God I cannot pray for hear you, your and prayers. And I love you. You do not. You have shown me and no I love, do. sir. No, and no. I do love you. I don't believe you, and sir. And I do love you. I don't believe Just you. Just as I love everybody you out don't, here. Sir. You love yourself. Do you love me? Yes. That's why I'm telling you to turn from your sin and there put your you trust in Christ. That's all that's all that's turn required. Turn from your sin and put your trust that's in Christ. That's all that's required is love. No, no, The word man, of God true. says that love will cover a multitude of sins. Right. Yes, it does. So love is required. Yes, love, love is, is required, the but love is not all. Of humanity. No, it's of not. Of creation. Young man, no, it's of not. Of the word of God. Yes, it is. Young man. What, love is not? No, young man. So then we're See, you're, you're believing in a God you've created in your imagination who is only love. God is not only love. My friends, you need to understand that God is not only love. God is love, but God is not only love. Now, the, the, many people claiming to know Jesus like this young man want you to believe that God is all loving, that God will not punish anybody, that God does not hate sin or sinners. That's what he wants you to believe because that's the God he believes in. A God that is powerless to judge. A God that is powerless to save because he doesn't exist outside of this man's imagination. Yes, God is love, but God is not only love, my friends. God is holy. God is righteous. God is just. God is good. God is filled with wrath. God is angry with the wicked every day. God does not turn a blind eye to sin, my friends. See, and, and creating a God in your own imagination, like the young man who denies him, and like the young man who thinks he knows him, my friends, is called idolatry. It's idolatry. It is, young man. No, I'm not going to. It's idolatry. Whether you cut down this tree and use a third of it to build your house, a third of it to cook your food and warm your home, and then a third of it to build your little tiki to bow down and worship it, or you've created a God in your imagination to suit yourself, you are just as much an idolater. If you say that God is love and you deny his justice and you deny his anger with sin and you deny his wrath and you deny his holiness and you deny his goodness, you believe a lie and you blaspheme the God who created you, 
and you were an idolater. Is that unloving to say? Of course not. Of course not. God bless you, sir. Of course not. Friends warn their friends when their friends are in danger. It's as simple as that. If a young child were to run out here across Lancashire after a ball, thinking only of that ball, and there are people texting, coming north on Lancashire, not seeing the little child running out for the ball, should I just stand there and say nothing? Because I don't want to hurt the child's feelings. I don't want to tell the child they're doing anything wrong. I don't want to upset the child. I don't want to scare the child. Oh, she got squashed like a grape, too bad. Or should I run out there and grab the child by the arm and say, turn around, don't ever do that again. Don't ever run into, don't ever run into the middle of a street for a ball. You'll get killed. I don't want you to die. See, that's what we're doing out here. But those who love their sin and those who love themselves more than they love God hate that kind of truth. Because they worship the creature. Whether it's the God who is all love or the, or the God who this young man says doesn't exist, they are both idolaters. Because they have created gods to suit themselves. And they don't care about your soul. This young man would go to the man who blasphemes God and tell him, God is love, God is love, God is love. While he mocks the God who made him. And he thinks he's loving him. He's loving himself. He's making himself feel good. He's making himself feel righteous. So he could self-righteously judge the preacher. It's idolatry of self. And no idolater will enter into the kingdom of heaven. The one who denies God exists and worships the God of self and the one who says God is love and ignores every other attribute of God. Neither one will enter into the kingdom of heaven. I don't want that for them. I don't want that for that angry man who got in my face and said he was loving me. I don't want that. I don't want that for the young man who would, who would murder a child because the child was the, uh, the, uh, the byproduct of a rape. I don't want that for him. I don't hate them. I want them to come to faith in Christ. They're both foolishly running out into the middle of the street after a ball they call God that they've created in their imagination, ignorant of the fact that the wrath of God abides on them. So I'm going to tell them that the wrath of God abides on them because I don't want them to perish in their sin. I want them to come to faith in Christ and not the Jesus of his imagination, the real Jesus. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, who was with the Father in creation. All things were created by him, through him, for him. Nothing was ever made that was not made by Jesus Christ. He is the sinless Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world, and he is the Lion of the tribe of Judah who will judge both the living and the dead. He was born of, a, born of a virgin, just as the prophet Isaiah declared more than 700 years before he was born. He lived a perfect life in thought, word, and deed. He perfectly obeyed the law of God in every respect for a, a human life that spanned some 33 years. He lived a perfect life for some 33 years that you and I cannot live for 33 seconds. And then he voluntarily went to the cross. He suffered and died a horrific bloody death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment you and I rightly deserve for our sins against God. And then three days later, he forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. And unlike every false god created in the imaginations of men, Jesus Christ is alive today. And he will return 
at a time of the Father's choosing. And what God commands of you, what He commands of me, what He commands of all people everywhere, is that we repent, that we turn from our idolatry, that we turn from our love of self, that we turn from our hatred of God. So great a hatred that we would change His character and invent an imaginary God in our mind. So grotesque that we would say God is only love. And by faith and by faith alone, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior while God, will give, while God is giving you time. And if God does that miraculous work, if He literally causes you to be born again, born from above, and extends to you the gifts of repentance and faith in Him that only He can give, He will take your heart of stone and He will give you a heart of flesh. You'll stop saying, Hail Satan, like that means something. And you'll worship your Creator. You'll stop saying things like, God is love while you're yelling in someone's face and not see the hypocrisy of it. You'll love the things that God loves. You'll hate the things that God hates. And when you do fall short of His glory, as we all do, you can have the assurance of eternal life, the assurance of forgiveness, not on the basis of anything you have done in righteousness, but based entirely on God's mercy. Entirely on God's grace. Entirely on what Jesus Christ did on the cross. That's good news. But these two young men claiming different gods revile that good news. Because they love themselves and they love their sin more than they love the God who made them. And the love of God is not in them. But God can take even hearts this stony, even hearts this hard, and soften them. And I pray that's what He does for each and every one of you. All of you. I don't want anybody to perish in their sin. Yeah, there's only one lawgiver and judge. There's only one who's able to save and destroy. It's not a 51-year-old guy named Tony. It's Jesus Christ the Lord. Turn to Him and be saved. Confess with your mouth that He is Lord. Believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead. And you will be saved. Jesus said, Come to Me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, my friends. He'll give you rest. There's no rest in false worship. There's no rest in false worship. So when the Satanist and the guy who says God is only love shake hands in union together, what does that tell you? It tells you they both worship the same God. Because he walked back to that bench, every bit as dead in his sin, as he was when he got up and shook the man's hand. That kind of false religion destroys. That kind of false religion kills. Turn to Christ. Turn to Christ. There are no proud people in heaven. Whether you're proud of your religion or proud of your sin, there are no proud people in heaven. Because God humbled Himself. Because God humbled Himself to take on the form of human flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. Because God humbled Himself. Because He shed His innocent blood on a Roman cross for crimes He did not commit so that sinners like you and me could be forgiven. God humbled Himself. That's why you should humble yourself. That's why you should repent. That's why you should turn to Christ. Because God humbled Himself on behalf of sinners like you and me. Turn to Christ and live. Dear friends, turn to Christ and live.